Welcome, my name is Jeff Bartles. I'm an infrastructure technical specialist at Autodesk. And in today's session, we're gonna look at how we can aggregate data from multiple sources to produce an InfraWorks model. We'll specifically be looking at some of the Esri integration, but we're also gonna look at some other data sources that we can aggregate into InfraWorks. Just a quick heads up, I am working out of my office today and I've got my dogs in here with me. Just took this picture a second ago. That's Walter there at the top and Margaret down below. I only bring this up in the event you hear some ambient noise in the background that could be them milling about. I have loaded them up with treats though, so I don't anticipate any, any issues. With that, a little bit about myself. I have been working in the civil infrastructure industry for more than 20 years. I've been teaching Autodesk applications for a long time. I also contribute to a blog called Civil Immersion, and I've got the URL there on screen. That blog was put together by some of the technical specialists and I, the sole purpose to create how-to content for Autodesk customers to, to get acclimated to the many tools that are in the AC collection. Over the past couple of years, we have created hundreds of recordings, uh, little six to eight minute recordings to help people start using and, and take advantage of the many tools that they have access to. Agenda for today, I'm, I'm gonna do a little introduction to InfraWorks. We've got a lot of people on the call, which is fantastic. And I'm not sure what everybody's usage of InfraWorks is currently, so I'd, I'd like to lay a little foundation first, if you don't mind. We'll also look at how we can incorporate data into InfraWorks, both existing and proposed from several different sources. We'll look at, you know, once we have that data in InfraWorks, a couple different ways we can visualize it. And then we'll look at the, the data that we do bring into InfraWorks. I'll show you how we can take advantage of the rich attribution to do some analysis of that data. We'll wrap up with a summary and we'll also address any questions. I have the questions listed at the end there, but you can ask those at any point along the way. The goals for today's session, I've, I've got review relevant workflows. So, so basically aggregating data is what we're talking about. I say that because InfraWorks does a lot of different things and we could spend more than a day talking about all the things that it can do. So today we're just gonna be exploring a subset of what's possible. During the presentation, we'll be stressing the business benefits. And as always, we wanna make sure that you get answers to your questions. This is going to be a PowerPoint free zone. So rather than showing bullet points and screenshots, I've found that it's more impactful to show the software live. And after saying that, whenever you work live in the software, it can be both an exciting and a frightening time. So no two presentations are the exact same. So it'll be fascinating to see how this one goes. With that, we're gonna jump right into the live demonstration. Let me drop out of this and I'm gonna bring up InfraWorks. So InfraWorks is included in the AC collection. It's a tool that basically we can aggregate data from multiple sources to produce 3D models. In the interface, I've got several tiles. Each of these tiles represents a model that I could open. Uh, let's say that I'd like to create a brand new model. Maybe I'm creating a model that I'd like to visualize a proposed retail facility or retail site plan. I'm gonna start by going to Model Builder. Model Builder is a lot like Google Earth. I can take and type in a community name or I can type in in an address, I'm gonna type in a street name here that's close to my project. And there we go, Littleton, Colorado. Let's drag this over. So this is my site right here. This is where I'm going to be doing the retail and there'll be apartment complexes. It'll be a large site plan. Once I've selected my area, I can use this to, to build a 3D model. All I have to do is select the area of interest you can see I've, I've grabbed about 5.7 square kilometers. We can create models up to 200 square kilometers. At this point, I could just come down and give this a name. We'll call it sample retail for now. And then I would choose create model. When I do that, InfoWorks is gonna go out and it's gonna grab any freely available online data. It'll grab geospatial data for the road center lines, building footprints. You can see those are gonna be coming from the open street map data set. It will grab aerial photography for me from the Bing data set, and it will also get me some topography from USGS data. Back in the old days, we had to go out and find that stuff ourselves. But now using Model Builder and just a couple clicks, I can create this model automatically. So I'll click Create. It's now preparing the model. Let's close this up. Depending on the size of the model that you create, could be anywhere from five to 15 minutes before it wraps up. When it does, you'll get an email letting you know the model's available. And when the model's available, it will show up here in the interface. Now, rather than waiting for that one to finish, I'm gonna open one here. This shows us what that model would look like right from Model Builder. If I zoom in on this, kind of orbit it up, we can see the aerial photography. We can see that it grabs some street information. In fact, if I hover over these, you can see the street names are there. 
Let's pan this back, and if I tip it up, we can see some of the relief on the site from that USGS data. It also found a water area here. So in just a matter of a couple clicks, I have a nice foundation that I can use to start building out my site plan. At this point, I can start aggregating my own data if I want to. Let's say that I have some geospatial data representing parcel boundaries. I'd like to get an idea where the lot lines are. I'm going to come up and open the data sources panel. And here you can see all of the connections of the data that we got from the model builder tool. If I open the menu here, we can see all of the different data types that InfoWorks can consume. Everything from 3D models to, to civil 3D files to Revit files, MicroStation, LandXML, point clouds, geospatial, even a SketchUp data. So we connect to many of the industry standard formats. Those can be aggregated into InfoWorks. We can also connect to several different database sources. And we can now with the Esri integration, we connect to, we can connect to ArcGIS data. And we'll touch on that in just a little bit. I'd like to start by bringing in that parcel data. So I'm going to open the menu and I'll choose shapefile. And then I am going to navigate to my folder containing my data. And I've got this shapefile called parcels. I'll select that and click open. And here we can see that it's made a connection to that shape, although InfoWorks doesn't know what it is yet. To configure that, I'm going to simply double click on it. And then in the data source configuration panel here, I just have to tell InfoWorks what this data represents. And you can see the many feature classes that are available here. By picking a feature class, we're then telling InfoWorks, you know, what schema that we'd like to use for it. And, and we can use this to, to stylize the objects. I'm going to say that these are coverage areas because I'd like these parcels draped along the surface. I can then come down and pick a style. And you can see there's a few styles here. You can also make your own. I'll choose this one called parcels. I'll click OK and I'll click close and refresh. So the, the style that I'm choosing here is basically going to outline the lots using a white line. All right, let's take this one step further. So now I can, I can very easily see where the property lines are. I'd like to take it one step further. Maybe I would like that if, you know, if I hover over a lot, I'd like to see who owns it. To do that, we can create tooltips. I'm going to come back over to that connection. Let's double click to configure it again. And this is these, these tabs represent the InfoWorks schema. I can use this to leverage some of that attribution in the connection. So for the name, let me expand this and you can see the attributes that are in that parcels file. Don't have a ton of them here, but I do have one for owner. I'd like to map the owner to the name. I will then come over to tooltip. We can create HTML tooltips in InfraWorks and we can build these automatically or we can take and write these ourselves. I'm going to come down and say, I'd like to generate a tooltip that's going to show the name. Oop, hold on. Let's do that one more time. There we go. I'll choose close and refresh. And when it refreshes the data, all I have to do is hover over a lot now with my cursor and it will show me who owns it. Now I'm doing it with, I'm, I'm doing this with names, but I could, you know, any attribution that's on there we could have as part of a hover tooltip. I'm also doing this with parcels, but you can do this with any data connection that has attribution. Okay, let's back this up. So this is my area of interest here. If I'm going to be doing a proposed retail site plan, I'd like to, you know, kind of empty this area out or at least kind of create a clean slate, if you will. I have another shape file that represents this property boundary, and I'd like to use that to kind of simplify this area, just make it look like a, a large grassy area. Let's look at another way we can attach data. If I bring up Windows Explorer, I can navigate into my shapes directory, and I have a shape file called grass lot. Another way we can attach data to InfraWorks is simply drag and drop. Let me drag and drop this in. So, you know, this, this speaks to the learning curve. I can use as much or as little of the interface as I want. I don't need, need to know what the, the connections are. I can just drag them into the application. I'm going to add this as a coverage area. And then I will choose a material for this. There are a ton of materials that come out of the box. You can also create your own. So once it makes this connection, you can see that the coverages are stacking up under that feature class over here. And the material that I put on that is adaptive. So the closer I get to this, the better it looks. It'll, it'll start all the way down where I can you know, start seeing the, the blades of grass. Let's back up. 
So the next thing I'd like to add is maybe I'm working with an engineer and they gave me the proposed grading for this project. A, a standard way of exchanging, you know, engineering data is land XML. Let's open the menu here and I'd like to attach to a land XML file. So I'll select that. I will then go to my data set and I'll grab this pr uh, proposed ground land XML file. And I'll click open to attach that. Basically, the, the InfoWorks model is, is essentially a SQLite database. So what it's doing is it's taking that data and it's inserting it into the, into the database. And we'll see that show up as another connection here, another data source. Now it needs to be configured. Let's double click. And it automatically knows that that's terrain data. The coordinate system for that is already there. So let me choose close and refresh. That will process it such that it can display as a surface. And in the old days with InfoWorks, it, InfoWorks only supported one surface. Now it supports multiple. So you'll find that when this pops in, you know, many times when you drop in a surface, you're like, you know, hey, where is it? As I, as I zoom in, I don't, it doesn't look like anything changed. Well, the surface is here, but since we support multiple surfaces now, if I go to surface layers, I can see that I, my finished grade surface is showing up as an uncategorized. I'm going to drag that down into the ground surface area. And since it sits on top of those other data sources, it will take precedent. Let's turn it on too. And when I click OK, we will now start to see the relief created by that proposed surface. You might be able to see a little of that. We'll see more of it here in a second, but you can kind of see where the islands and the roadway and some of the parking lot is there. Let's do this. I'm going to bring in another shape file. I'm going to drag and drop the pavement asphalt into the model. I will then set this as a coverage area. We'll put a material on this. We'll go with maybe the roadway category. We'll go with surface dark asphalt and I'll choose close and refresh. So it's important to note that the connections that I'm making here, it is maintaining a link to that shape data. So in the event that shape data were to change in the future, all I have to do is come up and click the refresh button to update my InfraWorks model. I'm going to bring in one more. I've got some pavement stripes here. I'll drag and drop these into the application and then we'll put these in as a coverage. Since this is striping, I'm just going to drop this in as a color. I'll make that white. And this is considered linear. The, the other shape files that I've brought in have been closed shapes. So in, in this case, I want these to, to be linear. So I'm going to say don't convert closed polylines to polygons. And if I go to the table tab, you can see that we have a ton of control over the items that we bring into InfoWorks. I'm going to add a buffer to this of 0.25 feet. And what that will do is it'll take the linear objects and it will essentially offset them to the left and right a quarter foot. So it's giving me a six inch wide stripe is what it's doing. Uh, but using this technique, we can we can easily drape, you know, like these parking stripes, we can easily drape CAD geometry. It's another way we can bring stuff like that in and, and drape it over the top of a surface so we can see it in our InfraWorks model. So as this populates, we can start to see some of the striping there. Another thing we'll do, we're going to touch on the concept of proposals here. Rather than having, you know, having you watch me bring in a whole bunch more data, I'm going to use this proposal feature to switch to a, a different a version of this model. I'll grab this one called All Coverages. This proposal represents the model after all of the coverages have been added. By using this proposal feature, we don't have to save multiple versions of a model. By creating a proposal, we can have those different versions or variations within one InfraWorks model. One proposal may be existing conditions. Another one may represent phase one. Another one may be phase two. And then you can flip through the various phases just by selecting a different proposal. So in my case, I'm, I'm kind of using the proposals like a baking show. I'm going to jump to this one just to show you a finished example here after all of the coverages have been added. If I tip this up, you can see some of the relief there for the roadway and the parking. So now that we have, you know, kind of the layout of where things are going to go with this site plan, I, I may wish to start adding some other items, like maybe a building, for instance. Maybe I'd like to sketch out a building. InfraWorks includes several drawing tools or, you know, sketching tools. I can create roadways and, and barriers and bridges and tunnels. I'm going to click the building option. I'd like to sketch a building here quickly. And when I launch that, you can see it brings up the library that has all of the facades that I can choose from. There's a ton of them. I'm just going to 
keep the default there. And to draw the building, I am going to pick points here on screen. You can see there's a dimension little toolbar there. I can fill that out as well. In this case, I'm just kind of free picking points. I double click when I'm done and InfraWorks will apply a generic height to that building. Notice that its properties show up over here. The building also includes a series of grips. I can use this one to adjust its height. And you can see I can also punch in a height on there if I want to. The nice thing about these facades is as you change the height of the building, you'll see the facade update. We also have grips that I can rotate the building or I can use this gizmo to move it around or up or down so I can, you know, more precisely position it if I want to. So quick tools for doing sketches of, of many different types of objects. I'm going to press escape. Let's get rid of this building. I'll delete that. Uh, maybe you've gotten a building from an architect. If you remember, we support several 3D model formats. We also support Revit. We support SketchUp. I'm going to import a model of the building that's going to go on this lot. Let me go back to my directory and I'm going to bring in this FBX model. This was actually exported from Revit, so it has all the materials on it. It also has an included position file that retains the coordinate system. So if I drag and drop this in, it will drop in exactly where it's supposed to. All I have to do is tell InfraWorks what this is. This is a building. In fact, if I click the 3D model, if I click that tab, I can see the building there. I'll choose close and refresh. And then we'll see that pop up on screen. When this comes up, it will have the same materials that were assigned in Revit. We could connect to the actual Revit building as well. FBX is just another option. So as I get down here, we can see through the windows. Let's get down here a little bit closer. Up till this point, I've been kind of orbiting and moving with my cursor. But you can also move using the keys on your keyboard. So I can hit the forward key and walk forward. I can use the left and right keys to turn. If you ever played Doom back in the day, same keys. So I could strafe left and right, walk forward. Only thing I'm missing is the fire button. So for those of us who are in our 50s now, I guess, Doom is probably part of your history. It'll be just like going home again, navigating. Let's back this up. I'm going to flip to another proposal now that I have one building in here. Let's change this to a proposal where all the buildings have been added. And here we'll see an example of a further iteration of this model. There we go. So I can see I've got some retail. I've got maybe an office building here. I've got the apartment complex. At this point, I'd like to add some additional accoutrements to this maybe some landscaping or something like that. Here on the Create tab, I'm going to open up Environment, and maybe I'd like to add a tree. I'm going to choose a Stand of Trees here for a second, and it brings up my library. Let me set that to Vegetation, and you can see that it, it comes with a significant number of trees and vegetation out of the box. You can also download content from online. I'm going to select just this green tree and then to place that in the model, all we have to do is double click to, to drop that in. When the models or when the tree's inserted, we can see the properties there. And if I zoom in here, you can see the same grips that we had with the building. So the nice thing about InfraWorks is, is its consistency. I have the same tools for everything. That's another thing speaks to the learning curve. Very easy to learn this application. So I dropped in one tree there. Let's put in a row of trees. I'll choose row of trees. There we go. Let me flip that back to vegetation. And I'm going to go with the brown tree this time. If you wanted to put a row of trees in or, or a row of anything, barrels or barricades or vehicles or something like that, all you have to do is single click. And each time you pick, you'll be creating a linear shape and you double click at the end. And then when you do that, you'll see that InfraWorks inserts the objects along that linear shape. The only real difference between a linear insertion and a single is this density slider. If I drag this to the right, I get more trees. If I drag it to the left, I get fewer. There we go. Let's orbit this around. You can see how with the trees, it kind of randomizes them so that they don't all look the same. If I wanted to edit a tree, I could simply click on it once. If I wanted to edit the whole group, I could click it a second time, and then I can edit the entire group. 
So when it comes to inserting objects into InfoWorks, all the insertions work the exact same way. Let's do one more. I'm going to go to City Furniture here, and maybe we'll drop in a car. I'll select a vehicle. We'll take and drop that here into the parking stall. There we go, and we'll just use the little rotational grip here to kind of straighten that out. So very easy to make connections to data. We can also further augment that using the library in InfraWorks or, or even data that we've acquired online. Let's jump. One more proposal here. We're going to go to the end. This one shows us our proposed site plan with everything inserted, all the vehicles, all of the landscaping and buildings. In fact, if I double click here, you can see that they inserted some lighting in the parking lot. These could have easily been inserted using a geospatial connection. If you had a geospatial file that was set to points, you could import those points and simply select the model as your symbol to have those go in at the appropriate location. Let me do this too. We talked for a second about the tool tips. Those tool tips are HTML and the sky's the limit with those. Just as an example here, I've got this urgent care facility. If I hover over this facility, I just want to show you that I've got a tool tip that allows me to open files. So I could click here and go right into the Revit model for this building. Likewise, if I have any documentation, I'll click this. This will take an open uh, Adobe Acrobat, take me right into a PDF file. So using this workflow, you could leverage an InfoWorks model almost like a kiosk. You could use the items in the model to drill down and access further data. You know, everything from, you know, an employee list to a installation schedule to a maintenance schedule. All of that can be incorporated, parts, numbers, things like that. All of that can be incorporated into any of the objects in your InfraWorks model. Currently, I'm viewing this as the default conceptual view. There are other views. I'm going to flip this to engineering for a second. And when I do, you can see in the engineering view, we can see through the terrain. This shows us the utility information. So I heard somebody was affiliated with an airport. Just imagine if you had the, the full airport here in InfraWorks and you had all the buildings with hyperlinks where you could leverage data. You had all of the underground utilities or, or any of the other assets associated with the airport. As an example, I can click on this and, and I can come down and see its attribution. That's a 10 inch ductile iron pipe. Let's tip this up. And I'm gonna flip this back to a conceptual view. And let me close this up for a second. Let me talk for just a second about visualization options. If I go to manage here under display, if I choose sun and sky, we have the ability to adjust the time and date. If we wanted to do a shadow study, sun and shadow study, I can also adjust some of the other environment settings like wind direction, speed and cloud cover. We can create still images from this under present here if i choose create snapshot i can take you know rather than the screenshot where i'm just extracting an image from my monitor i can go through and extract a, a screenshot where i set the pixel resolution i could type this to i could set this to 30,000 by 30,000 pixels if i wanted to that would create an image that is so detailed i could zoom in and read the license plates on these cars so using this tool we can create imagery that's suitable for web or for print and, you know, we don't have to wait for a rendering because InfraWorks is a lot like a gaming engine. It's always in a rendered state. Let's touch on, you know, if I wanted to do an animation, like a fly-through animation. I'm going to bring up the storyboard creator here. If you've ever created an animation before, you know that it could take hours. Sometimes it could take days because a lot of applications will render each individual frame separately as an image. Here, I don't have to worry about that because InfraWorks is always in a rendered state. So I just opened the menu here and said I wanted to create an, a camera path, which basically saved a camera location in space. I can then pick another location. You know, where do I want to be next? Maybe I'd like to be here. Oop. Unless I back up, maybe I'd like to be here. I'll come down and click Add. And that will save the camera location there. Let's go down to the corner here a little bit. Maybe we'll go here. 
and then I'll do one more. Maybe we'll we'll fly down to the end here and we'll wrap up our fly through with a view of the overall site. There we go. I'll come down and click add. So in this case, I've only created one item. There are a ton of pre-made crane animations and orbits and, and you can record a walkthrough if you want to. There's a there's a bunch of ways that we can take and string these things together. So in this case, I've just made one. I'm going to come over here and select my keyframes and you can see by default, it sets the speed a little bit fast, about 300 miles an hour. I'm going to click in here and I'm going to change this to a speed that's a little better, maybe 25 miles an hour. And when I hit enter, you can see how that affects my, my uh, storyboard. At this point, I can click the play button and it gives me an animation that is, is as smooth as glass. Now you, you may see a little bit of jitter on your end because of internet connection. We will be sharing the video here after the session and you'll see that creates a nice animation. I can export this and I, I could create titles that fade in and out. I can have captions that fade in and out during the animation. We can create point of interest objects that have a radius around them that, you know, if you get within a certain radius of this point, it'll display almost like a tool tip. So we can have it as you're moving through the video, it can take and, you know, give you the names of the buildings, you know, the name of the apartment complex, or if this was an airport, you know, the name of the, the terminals, or if it was a college, the, the names of the dormitories. You can see we're coming up here on the Applebee's over here on the right. But you don't have to be Martin Scorsese to generate a compelling visualization using InfraWorks. It's very easy to use the application. Okay, I'm going to pause this. So just that's some, some foundation we've connected to a few things here. Let's take a look at the Esri piece. I'm going to go back to my InfraWorks home screen and I'm going to open another model. This model represents a street in Washington State. It's, it's uh, 196th Street. I'm using this model because I was able to capture some data for this online. Here we can see the model that was created essentially from Model Builder. I've got the aerial photo, I've got the topography, I've got some of the buildings here. In fact, if I hover, we can see some of the names still. So this is a major highway. Maybe we'd like to add a bike path to this. To do the bike path, it may require some widening, may require adjusting some of the lanes. You know, at this point, we'll say I'm an engineer and I'm producing my existing conditions model. So I can start working on my design. Maybe one of the things I'd like to show is where the storm structures are, some of the underground utilities. And we'll say that my GIS department has that data. It's available as feature layers in ArcGIS Online. Rather than having them, you know, go the old fashioned route and give me shape files, I'd rather connect to that data directly. So I'm going to go back to data sources. And to make that connection, I'll come up and click the ArcGIS data source button. When I do, this will log me right into ArcGIS Online. And as a courtesy, it will show me the limit of my model. So it's, it's kind of like Model Builder in this case. Over to the left, I can select the data that I'd like to bring into the model. By default, it reverts to public. So this is the, the data that's curated by the folks at Esri. So you may be able to use the filter option here and, you know, look for, you know, other data sources that you may want to incorporate into your model. In my case, I've stored my stuff under my content, but you may have yours under, you know, groups or organization. If I choose my content here, what it's showing is data that is adjacent or, or in the area of this model. I've got other data that I've uploaded to ArcGIS online, but as a courtesy, it will actually limit what you see to, to what's actually in this vicinity. And what I have here is a pair of feature layers, one for the storm structures and one for the pipes. I also have a web map. The nice thing about the web map is a web map can actually reference multiple feature layers. So rather than making attachments to these individually, I can grab a web map where they're already attached and it allows me to bring in everything at one time. If I click the eyes, I can see the content that I'm going to bring in. And right here, I can designate the items that I'd like to bring into my InfraWorks model, and I can then designate the feature class I'd like to use. So for the storm structures, I'm going to choose pipeline connectors. And for the pipes, I'm going to choose pipelines. And then I'll come down and choose add to my design project. And what InfraWorks is going to do is it will create a new feature class for each of those items. It does that because it's actually going to bring the schema along from the, the feature layer. So we'll have access to all of the attribution as well. 
So now that we have the connection, you can see I have two new feature classes here. If I zoom in on the roadway and tip this up, I, I don't see any utilities just yet. They're here, but they're down at elevation zero. It's, it's going to be the attribution that's associated with these files that I'll use to get them up and stylize them in 3D. For example, we're going to start with the structures. I'll double click. So we're going to configure this just like we've seen. We'll keep the current feature class. I can select my style. Since these are structures, I'm going to choose the manhole round style. And then I can start mapping the attribution to the schema here in InfoWorks. Elevation offset. This represents the rim. Where's the rim elevation? If I open up the menu, I happen to have an attribute for the rim. I'll choose that. For the size of the structures, we're going to set that in the X and Y direction. I have an attribute called manhole diameter that I will use for both of those. And then the height, this is the distance from the rim to the bottom of the structure. Let's open this up. I'm gonna, I've got an attribute called sump distance that uh, takes care of that. At this point, I'll choose close and refresh. Hit then, oh, issue. You can see that I mean, it's close if it was above ground. Let me show you this. Let me go back in under the configure. The one thing I didn't do this sump distance needs to be negative. Let me set that to negative because I want them to go down. That's why they came up. Notice that there's also a button here. I could do an expression editor. We don't have to take these attributes as they are. We can apply math to them if, if we want to. So this is very simple math. I'm just saying make it negative. Let me choose close and refresh. And it will reprocess those again. That's a little better. Okay, there's my, there's my structures now appearing underground. Let's take care of the pipes now. I'll go ahead and double click for the pipes. And I will choose a style. I'm going to go with the concrete pipe. You can make your own styles. We'll do that. And then for the elevation of these pipes, we can base pipes. We can set them as an elevation, you know, as an offset to a surface. Or in this case, I have attribution representing the inverts. Elevation from, I've got a attribute for called invert up or the high side of the pipe. Elevation to. This one's invert down or the low side of the pipe. I can then use the size to set the diameter. I have an attribute here called pipe size. Let's come down and select those. And then I, oh, let me, uh, let's do this. I just want to show you, I have an attribute in here called sue. This is one that's used heavily for underground utilities. Sue designates the quality of the location. A sue value of A means it's based on survey grade location. A SU value of D means it's word of mouth, really. We, we kind of think that there's a utility in that area, or it's right about in this area. We're actually going to use some of this attribution here in a second. But I just wanted to show you that SU value is there. Let's choose Close and Refresh. And if I tip this up, we can see there's my pipe connections. If I click on one of these pipes, we can come over to the properties, and here we can see the attribution coming along from ArcGIS. Note that these are editable values. If I want to, I can change these. And if I want to, I can pass these changes back to the original source. The way that happens is if that feature layer in ArcGIS Online is, it needs to be set to be editable and I need to have the appropriate rights. So the geospatial department still controls that. We can't just send stuff back willy nilly. It's gonna be controlled on that end. But I just wanna show you that these can be changed and it is possible to send them back. And we'll touch on that here in a second. So now that I have those objects here in the model, let's flip this to engineering view. So now I can see through the ground and let's take a look at the Sioux values for these. Now I could do it as a tool tip. I'm going to do it as a feature theme. Using feature themes, we can change the display of our objects based on attribution. I'll create a new feature theme and I'll call this storm sewer Sioux. I will then choose the feature class that I want to theme. I'm going to do the pipes property. I want to theme these based on the Sioux value. There's only four values, A through D. So I'm going to use the individual values for distribution. And you can see it's going to create four colors. When I click OK, it then displays that on screen. So if I'm the engineer working on this and, and you know, maybe the project I'm working on is going to be introducing a new utility in this area. If it crosses here, I know that I'm probably going to have a conflict. But if it crosses here at a C, or maybe if it crosses one of these at a D, the, the conflict's not necessarily certain. 
These are going to be items where we've got the utility, but we'll definitely need to send the survey crew out to find out if there'll be a conflict there or not. So I did this theming with the Sue value, but you could do it with any of your attribution. Okay. Let's take this out and I am going to, you know what? Let's leave it on for a second. Let's make a change. I'll tip this up and I'm going to change this pipe. I'll select it and we'll change its Sue value to a, and as fast as I hit enter, you can see that change. Let's push that change back to ArcGIS online. So I'll go back to data sources here, storm pipes. I'll right click on that and I'll choose save back. And you can see success that went back. Let's log in. Just so we can complete the circle here, I'm going to log into ArcGIS online and I'll go to content. And then I will go to my 196th street utilities folder. And we'll go to the web map that contains both of those feature layers. We'll open this in the map viewer. And here I can see those utilities. If I click that pipe now here online, I can see that now has a SU value of A. So like I said, if the feature layer is set to editable and I have appropriate rights, I can actually make the changes here in InfoWorks and push those changes back. Okay, with that, I'm going to jump out of this. Let me come back over here. Just a couple other things if you're interested. For those of you that are using InfraWorks, you know, the buildings that we create in InfraWorks can seem a little shoebox-ish because the building footprint is extruded straight up. That's kind of like a level one detail. If you wanted to have high detail buildings, there are third party vendors out there that can create the buildings for you. This is a model that represents Hoboken, New Jersey. These buildings were created from a company called Pictometry, but there are other companies out there. I think Cyber City might do it as well. They basically flew this area and created FBX models of the buildings and then used the photography to create the textures that they mapped to the outside. So using, you know, that workflow, I've got highly detailed buildings all the way down to, we can see the air conditioners on the roof. And this animation that we're seeing was created using the storyboard editor, just like we saw earlier. One more thing, we kind of created that path, that storyboard path that went through the site. That path is independent of the proposals. So I can create an animation like we did a fly through animation of a site, and then I can take and flip to maybe the, we did proposed, maybe I flip to the existing conditions then, and I do the fly through again, save both videos, and then I can cut them together to create something like this. So same path, but I can fade back and forth between existing and proposed conditions. So being that that path is independent of the proposal, it allows you to do stuff like this. Okay, one more thing. If you're someone who has the collection, we can create stereo panoramas, just another way to visualize our models. In InfraWorks, I can export that model, that, that model we just looked at. I could export that to FBX, which is kind of a universal format, and I can open that up in Navisworks. If you've never used Navisworks before, you don't have to know the entire application. All you have to do is open the model and then position yourself where you'd like to be standing. And you can create what I like to call low cost virtual reality. You simply position yourself in the model where you'd like to be standing. And then we can create a rendering. I can use the render and cloud tool to create a stereo panorama. Now this is a cloud credit service. If I do it at the lowest quality, it doesn't cost anything. So sometimes I'll do a few of them just till I get things exactly the way I want. But if I do want it high quality, it's like 13 cloud credits or $13. It's done entirely on the cloud. When it's finished, you'll get an email. And if you click the hyperlink, it'll take you to your render gallery where you can view the rendering. When the rendering comes up, it will open up in kind of like a 360 degree view. You know, in this case, I'm standing in the parking lot here and I'm kind of dragging around and viewing my rendering. The best thing about these is that QR code right there. I can share these with others. If they scan that QR code with their smartphone, you know, virtually any smartphone, they can use this to view the stereo panorama. They can take and look up, down, left, right, and the view will move with them. In fact, if you're interested, if you have your smartphone out and you want to try and scan one of these, you can scan that. That'll open up the same model that we just saw. I can also share this if you want to experiment with this a little bit. The nice thing about this is if you're wanting to convey a compelling visualization for stakeholders, there's nothing like actually putting them in the model. 
And as long as you have a low cost device like the Google Cardboard or these little Hamido lenses, virtually any stakeholder can view your design. We've shown this to larger DOTs and they love the concept because they could print that QR code in the newspaper if they wanted to, to give people the opportunity to view a project. So with that, covered a lot of stuff. We did a quick introduction of InfraWorks. We looked at how we could bring in a, a bunch of data, both ArcGIS Online. We looked at models. We looked at Land XML. We looked at shape files. We looked at how we could create visualizations, both still images and animations and low cost virtual reality. We also saw that when we do make connections to data, we have access to that rich attribution and we can use that to do analysis. So with that, I'm going to take a big drink of water and we can address any questions that you may have.